All right, so how was that? Any, any um, how was the assessment? Embarrassing. Why was it embarrassing? How little I was doing. <laughs> are, you, are you getting a lot of nevers? Or not often? Or sometimes? A lot of sometimes. I'm not an evil person. <laughs> well, it's the nature of me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. What did you say, Mary? What did you say? He's a curmudgeon. He's a curmudgeon. Right. Well, I I know him. Oh, We've okay. known each other for years. No, no, it's about well. I think investment. Yeah, definitely money. Let any anything else? Any other any other um, reactions? Yes. I noticed yes. that things like stopping to engage in holiday conversations or. You know, sharing feelings, encouraging others to do the same, mm -hmm. taking the time to learn the skills and desires of team members. It made me wonder if I can sometimes be a little selfish at work because I'm so like, oh, I have a long to do list, and you say, <laughs> you know, I don't really bother to figure out what everybody else is looking at if it's not directly related to myself. Yeah. So. Well, it's just, and a lot of this is just to make you aware. Yeah. So, and, and also the, the scale I use, it's not good, it's not excellent, good, fair, or poor, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's just the, it's the the nature, it's, it's like how often do you do these types of things? So in terms of not often, never, sometimes, very often, always, it's just to give you like these aha moments. Yes? So the idea would be that we have like, Always in all of them? No, not 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 typically. Um, not that's not the idea. The idea is to kind of just bring it to your mind. Are there some times where you can actually have those hallway conversations? You know, are there times? You know, so can you move it from not often or never to maybe sometimes? Because my thing is, if you get move it always, if you move everything to always, where do you get? You get to that. Over, overused. You get to that overused piece. So we don't want to. We don't want to move it to all the way to the right, the left hand. But we want to have a balance. But we always want. I just want to make you aware that these are some things that people look at in terms of interpersonal as demonstrating interpersonal savviness. I. I this was news to me. And these 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 fourteen questions. They're in that book, and they're underneath those whole things of sheer responsibility. And you say, well, I'm not the manager. I shouldn't have to share responsibility. But everybody has a, a coworker who basically looks out for everybody, you know, who speaks up. And they, they say, oh, well, so-and-so didn't get a book. Or we didn't, we didn't get, per, you know, we didn't get, um, what was it, Ali? We didn't get Ali's comment. You know, we didn't get him to, you know, present his, his, his viewpoint, you know? There's always someone like that. And I'm sure you guys remember uh, you guys remember someone in your work world who has been that person who who looks out and makes sure that everybody is heard. That trustworthiness. What's what? How would you define trustworthiness? What is trustworthiness? Oops. What is trustworthiness? Do what they say they're going to do. That's it. Do what they say they're going to do. Exactly. So that's it kind of it's uh, connected to honesty. Open and available. Okay, so the thing is, if your door is always open, if your door is always open, sometimes you're not getting the work done. But we want to balance it, right? We want to have that balance of being open and available at times. Sometimes you're going to have to close the door to get it done, to get things done. Listening skills, very key, very key. And, uh, and it's funny because some of these is like, I read, what are some, some of the questions that deal with listening skills? What, what question numbers do you think deal with question, um, listening skills? Nine. Nine? Mm -hmm. Eleven. That's exactly, yes. Exactly. Fourteen. Yes, exactly. Yes. I have a question regarding uh, number six. Uh -huh. When it says feelings, what kind of feelings are we talking about? Because I think it's like super broad, 
And I think, for example, if I go tomorrow to my office and I say, like, oh yeah, I have this horrible file with my husband. The people are gonna look weird at me. <laughs> I don't think, think that's the kind of feelings that you are that you are expected to share, right? So should what? should these be only feelings regarding like situations at work, or and then if that's the case, should should it only be feelings like if I share my feelings with somebody, it has to be about my feelings about that person, or then or I'm also expected to, expect to say like if I have a disagreement, with, let's say with my boss then I'm supposed to also be sharing those kind of feelings with a colleague. So if you can explain a little bit. Okay, so let's go back to emotional, emotional intelligence. So being aware of your feelings, but being able to share your feelings when appropriate, especially because a lot of times when we come into the work world, we don't leave our feelings at home, do we? And we, we, t we spend a lot of time at work. We spend eight hours or nine hours, sometimes 10 or 12 hours for some folks at work. So we can't shut off our emotions. And if we disagree or if we agree, there are some emotions that we should um, reflect. So actually go back to that one pager. Go back to the one pager that I gave to you. It's, it was at the top. So uh, in terms of what I see, that self-awareness, developing that feeling vocabulary. So you're mad, you're sad, you're glad, you're afraid, you're confused, you're ashamed. And within each of these categories, there are, there are feelings. So like ashamed, it, uh, one, of the, one of the feelings in there, you may, not, you may not feel ashamed, but maybe you're feeling, oh gosh, where is this? Maybe you're feeling, um, we would call it embarrassed, okay? So what's, you know, yeah, there we go. Embarrassed or flustered or regretful or remorseful. So the thing is, once you've named your feeling, then you can reframe it. You can reframe it and say, okay, I, I understand that feeling. Well, what do I need to, you know, I understand that, that, I, that that's the feeling that I'm feeling, but what do I need to do to get the work done? You know, you, you have to kind of reframe it. I'm upset about this. I can own my, the fact that I'm upset about it. And I can tell the person, you know, and, if, and once I calm down or whatever, I can, or if I get past that embarrassment, I can talk to the person. And so I, you know, and have that conversation where I was feeling embarrassed to tell you this, that I didn't get this done on time. You know, but I wanted to let you know because we're, you know, we're, I know that we're behind in getting this done. And that's, you know, maybe that's why I didn't come to you sooner and were to tell you that I hadn't done this because I was embarrassed. So if, so then they realize, you see how the feelings kind of, it's, it's not like, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it right that I'm, but it's just, it, it puts, it reframes it a little bit more. This requires the other person to be trustworthy. Exactly. Exactly. The other person definitely has to be trustworthy.